What's up, guys? Happy Thursday. How are you? It's five o'clock. It's time for my live. Just setting up. Give me a second. All right, I'm gonna have my title guy here, Mark Medina, talking about title. So hang in there. Give me a second. Oh, what's up, bro? What's going on? Give me a second. I'm setting up. Let me know if you can hear me fine. Mark, I already sent you a request to come on in, so let me know when you get it. Bro, let me know if, if my sound sound if my uh if my sound if it sounds good. If you can hear my voice fine. Start live video. I'm gonna go live on Facebook too. So let's do this. All right. Sounds good. All right. How about on Facebook? Can you go on Facebook and check that too? I'm on Facebook Live as well. Let's see here. Let me clean this up here. Oh, you can't do full recording. Okay. All right. Let's see those money makers. Mark is unable to join. Come on, Mark. Why can't you join, brother? All right, guys, give me one second. We're going to be here. Oh, there you are, bro. Mark. What up? There you are. Hold on. Let me put my, my volume up. There you go. What's up, my man? Looking handsome, fella. <laughs> Looking good, dude. You got those old school glasses on like you always do. So you're Facebook Live too, huh? Yes. So I, I on my phone, I have Facebook Live and then on Instagram. So I get a little bit of both. I have the volume up on my iPad so that people that are on Facebook can hear you um, and they can ask any questions. So let's do it, man. So uh, let me introduce Mark, my main, my main man for title. Um, I've known him for a long time, at least 10 years, actually no, 12 years now, since I started working at Hilton and Highland back when I was uh, 20, 26 years old, man. So God, look uh, at you, you've aged. A little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and look at me, I never age. You look good, dude. It's, it's that Latino blood, like you always say. That's right. So anyway, Mark is uh, Mark works for California Title, and he helps me with all my title needs. So I have him on today to discuss, you know, you know anything that has to do with title. I you know a lot of people are always curious, like, why, you know, do I have to get title insurance? What does that do? I see a preliminary title report. All this stuff. So Mark's gonna answer all those questions. Mark's been in the business for thirty-two years. Wow, almost as long as I've been alive. That is crazy, <laughs> man. You are old. I love I'm, it. I'm getting there. You know, it's uh, the old saying is, if you love what you do, you know, it's not a day of work. You know, yeah, it's just, that's uh, true. Well, Mark, Mark, and I have, have actually gone motorcycle riding. He's got a nice Harley. So we, uh, we have that in common. We're both Latino. So that's also something else in common, which is cool. Uh, but uh, yeah, Mark's great. He's been, he's been helping me out for a long time in, in my title lead. So why don't you talk about you know, what you do? Like, like what, what kind of service do you provide in a real estate transaction? Okay, well, let me introduce myself. I'm Mark Medina with California Title. I've been with California Title 20 years. I've been with two other title companies at a short stint of five years each. I work for a small independent escrow starting in the business. So that makes me 32 years in the business. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, I did. That was oh, the good man. old days. That's cool. And, um, and then I also, uh, you know, help run family owned businesses and, and did things like that. So that helped me get into the sales game, you know? So, yeah. Um, other than that, so that's a little introduction. I, I have two beautiful daughters, 30, 26, Ra uh, Melissa and Rachel. And uh, the loves of my life. So that's a little bit about me, the personal part. But uh, that's awesome, man. By the way, uh, we have Realtor Diva on, so say hi to Realtor Diva. And then on Facebook Live, I have my, one of my best friends, Eric Chance from from Arizona. Uh, so what's up, Eric? Uh, we got my 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 title guy on Instagram Live. So why don't you hop on over to Instagram Live at Paul Salazar Group? Anyway, Mark, thanks for the intro, man. I didn't know that about your about you starting an escrow back in the day. That, that's 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 that, that's pretty cool. Um, so to talk about you know what service you, you provide in a real estate transaction. Well, what we do as a, as a title company 
is we actually, when we get a transaction, it's opened. Um, and as far as opening a transaction, but actually what we do at California Title to help real estate agents, we can help with uh, names and addresses, geographical farms. Um, if you're looking for certain liens or judgments, we can run data through our Basically, what we could do is is helping our real estate agents. We could provide geographical farming, marketing pieces that are on our website, things like that that we could do to help. But as far as a real estate transaction is, what happens is a, a title, a, an escrow company opens the title transactions, and we do a search on the seller. And what we do is we run uh, the property and what hits the property, and then we also what will hit the seller. So if there's derogatory things, sometimes we run into if someone's going through a divorce, they may have custody things that are on there. They may have the IRS liens that are on there. They may think, so that's kind of what we search from. And, and the way we obtain that information is on our preliminary title report, there's a, a document called a statement of information, which is obviously every time you take a listing pause, I recommend that you get us that statement of information as soon as possible. Sure. I got to take a little sip of water. All right. Well, I'll do it too. So anyway, guys, if you're, if I'm not you're drinking in, wine yet. Oh, well, I, I was drinking, I was drinking wine last week, yes. but uh, if, if you guys don't know, I'm going to be on here every Thursday around five o'clock, uh, as long as I don't have a listing appointment or, or showing houses. And uh, you know, I, I usually just, you know, answer any, any kind of real estate questions today. We have the honor of having uh, my man, Mark Medina on here. Uh, he's my t he's my title rep and he's been uh, working with me for the last 12 years. So Mark, um, so you you provide the service of pulling you know liens and all that stuff on any property. So if I'm a buyer and I'm looking to purchase a property, right? Uh, and let's just say you know I'm buying it for a million dollars and you find out that there's liens that are over a million dollars, what happens? See, that's why we will verify what actually is legitimate because a lot of times back in the day where loans were taken out and there's a thing called a reconveyance and the, the lenders used to send the homeowner the reconveyance and it was up to the homeowner to take that down and get it notarized and record it mm -hmm. um, at the county recorder's office. Those are kind of the only things that we run into, but now the lender takes care of the reconveyances. So okay. those would show paid. But sometimes we'll even show them on a preliminary title report where there are two or three owners ago. Because as a title company, we need to show everything of record that hits that property. And, you know, it's, it's generally cleared up through the course of ESCO. So it's not a big deal, you know, when you see stuff like that. So over encumbrances, that's, that's what you're talking about. If the person actually owes more money than the property's worth. Well, I don't think we've hit that point yet because those we are that was back in like 2007, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then that, it was fine after that. And, and then it became a short sale. Yeah. So yeah. that's when they were giving, lenders were giving loans out at 125% uh, loan to value, which um, I don't think we're going to ever be seeing that again. You know, yeah. so yeah. right now yeah. we got stellar interest rates. And um, it's amazing. Buyers have cash now. I mean, they're, they're, um, which is a wonderful thing for our business and going through this COVID, you know, I've been stuck at home for five months or going on six months now, and I'm actually working more efficiently doing the things that I need to do, able to go on live Instagram. Otherwise I'd be in my car driving and oh, yeah. knock, knocking on your door, you know, one of your, one of your, you know, 20 cars that you own. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> my daughter just joined us. Hi, Melissa. Oh, what's up, Melissa? I haven't met your daughters. I, I feel like I know them because I've known you for so long and you always post them. So I feel like I know. Yeah. Them. So Melissa I know is Melissa. getting married uh, in November. What? Yep. Yeah. Is that, so you are the, are, 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 is the other one married too or no? No, Rachel's 26. She's, she's, gotcha. no, she's still living with mom. She's getting her master's degree at oh, Cal nice. Oh, so, cool. Nice. Well, stay, congratulations. I didn't, I didn't know that you were going to, you know, have a, have a son in your, in your life soon. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We've had that conversation. Yes. Uh, uh, something in the future. I don't want a puppy. I want to. Uh, <laughs> you want to, you want to, you want a kid? You want to be a grandpa? 
I would love to be a grandpa. You You'll know, be, they obviously need to, take their, they need to take their time and, and you know, it's, it, the, it's all about the kids for one. For sure. And to have a child and all that. Melissa yeah. just bought her first house, by the way. So, oh, wow, congrats. You know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not happy that she didn't use me as her real estate agent. Yeah, she yeah. had, she had someone. Oh, come on, brother. <laughs> go. Um, I, it, I think it's time for me to find a new a, a new title rep now. I, do, you, do you even know where Thousand Oaks is? Uh, no, it's too far. I know. I, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. But hey, my we got we got my mom on as well. So my mom was actually the first person to introduce me to to residential real estate. Um, when I first, I, I remember the morning. I was it was like. Hold on. Yeah, her name is Nathy. Nathy Love. Nathy Love. Yes, Nathy Love. Well, that's her. That's her Instagram handle. Oh. Um, what's up, Christian? And uh, you know, I, I was working with my dad at the time, and, and it was just like a you know a temporary job. I knew I you know I didn't want to get into that business. And my mom, um, you know, told me I, I I still recall the moment. She's like, hey, you know, why don't you like just help me out for a little bit and see if you like it? And you know, I did it, and now we're here. You know, what is that? Uh, Fourteen years later, um, now I'm at Hilton and Highland and, and selling some big some big property. So it's it's pretty cool. It's a nice. So your trip. mom's a real estate agent as well. She was, she was. Now she's living in Colombia, so she's not a real estate agent anymore. Hola. <laughs> Mom, Mark is Latino, but he doesn't speak any Spanish, so. Oh, um, you know, I don't know. Trajo, poco de dinero. I don't know. <laughs> That's a good one. I don't know if, if, he, if, if we would consider him a, a Latino if, if he doesn't uh, actually speak Spanish. No, I, I am a Latino. <laughs> I am Mexican, true and true. My, <laughs> both of my parents, I can claim that. And I will. Oh, well, you, just, you need to learn how to speak the language, brother. Yeah. Anyway, I'm just giving you a hard time. All right, Mark. So a few other questions that, that, that we actually got. Um, talking about easements, right? Um, I'll give you a good example right now. Um, a property that, that we're selling uh, uh, in Hancock Park. Uh, you're not actually on title. Sorry about that. I'm, I'm rubbing the buyer. But there's an easement on the back of the house. Right. So it's about a, it's it's you know, it's 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 the it's the property line on the back of the house. Right. Um, and it's about 15 or 20 feet and it's for electrical and the gas company and all that stuff. So how does that really affect the property and affect the, the homeowner? Yeah. See, when when the developer starts developing these tracks, mm -hmm. it's the servicing companies like the telephone lines, the power lines where they actually were going to put up the telephone poles. So they create this easement so someone can't actually build on that. You can't do anything within that easement. So if you put any any structure, you cannot be within that easement. Even though it may be above you or it may be below you, you still can't add anything to that easement. So it's kind of like airspace that has been deeded to the city to use gotcha. for, for the services. And most easements, if they're along the rear back of the property, are about five feet generally. So most of yeah. them are five feet. Yeah. So, right. it, so it doesn't really affect, like, like if I'm a buyer and I see that on title, you know, there's an easement for gas, electric, all that stuff. Should I be worried about that? Should I, should I investigate that further? Or should I just talk to, you know, the, the, the title rep or the title officer and just ask questions? You should definitely talk to me all the time about whatever deal you got. But, okay. Uh, but what I recommend is if there's easements and you're, you're concerned, you know, you have the title company plot the easements. And what they do, they do a nice color-coded map and they tell you what it is. And let's say if there's three different utilities using the same easement, it'll tell you, you know, gas, electric, um, things like that that are in those easements. So, but if it's just something along the back five feet, it's, it's standard, it runs with the track, you know, the development of the property. So... But it's a lot of times where you'll get different kinds of easements, you know, that have been created by the homeowner. Maybe if someone is, you know, if they have a slope hill and they put their fence down here, maybe they created an easement for the neighbor to, to maintain that slope and gave them that extra land to use while they're living there. So, yeah, I mean, I've, I've seen some, uh, some interesting easements. One <laughs> of them was uh, a property in Bel Air. You rep that deal um, right on Bellagio. And the, the, the area where the homeowner put their trash cans was actually on their neighbor's lot, right? And it was just a simple letter that, that, you know, a simple agreement from, you know, this homeowner to the other homeowner saying, hey, you know what, 
I don't care about this land. I'm more than happy to, you know, let you use that land only to store your trash cans on there. Um, so, t you know, tell us more about that. Like, you know, if, if that homeowner, you know, you know, once they sell that property and, and the, and the homeowner, uh, you know, says, you know what, I don't want to, you know, let the next buyer or the next homeowner use that land. What kind of issues can arise from that? Well, that's, that's the agreement to, to void that easement would have to be between those two parties. Okay. So the same two parties that took out that easement. Otherwise it'll run in perpetuity with the land. Okay. So, so once that's there, it'll always be there unless the two people that agreed upon it wanted to vacate it. So, Oh, gotcha. So if it's on the preliminary title report as an easement, the only parties that can vacate it are the two parties that own the property at that given time. Yes. Or, you know, if the, I guess they could go to the new homeowner and say, you know what, I'm going to build a walkway right where you have my trash cans and they could probably agree to do it too. But the sure. easiest way to get rid of it would be from the original people that created it. Okay. Gotcha. What kind of easement problems have you kind of run into? I know that there are some where, you know, you know, you, you share an actual driveway and all that stuff. So are there any issues with like the lender or, or anything like that, like getting a loan, like the lender sees that and says, you know what, we're not going to give a loan on this property because there's an easement there that, that, that we don't like. Well, I, I think what you're talking about is like if, you, if they see an encroachment and, you know, because a lot of times properties and it's not hard, $3 million and above, we'll send an inspector to go do a walkabout. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. what he does, he'll walk the boundary lines. And if someone's fence is clearly over on our property or if we're on the neighbor's property, we will show an encroachment. And lenders do not like encroachments. Yeah. So sure. you want to procure that before you close or figure out an easement, like between neighbors, if you're not using that land and you want to agree upon something to make it work. I mean, we do it all day long. We, and there's things that you could do as a lot line adjustment, okay. but which actually changes the track map of the two properties. Mm -hmm. But that takes six to nine months. And now due to COVID, it'll probably take, who knows, a year to get something like that done. So okay. the easiest way to do it is to create that easement. Okay, sounds good. So so if, if, if I'm a buyer, I'm buying a property, and this actually happens a lot in the Hollywood Hills when you got these really interesting lot lines and, and hillside properties. You know, I've, I've actually had one where my client got a survey and there was all kinds of issues. You know, there was encroachments, uh, you know, this, this, this neighbor's fence is on my lot. His, his uh, front entrance gate is on part of my lot. And there was a few of these things on there. And, and the buyer, you know, saw that through, you know, their investigation. They, they spent two grand on a survey. Um, and so talk to us a little bit more about getting a survey, if that's something that, that a buyer should get uh, when buying a property. You know, um, as far as title insurance goes, I, I, don't, I don't recommend getting a survey because un unless in something like that where, things are problematic. I mean, you, yeah. it's all over the place and you want to protect yourself. You, you know, as a buyer, you know, it de depends on how you feel about it. If you don't really care, you know, but if you're concerned and you clearly see that those things are, you know, in a different place, that's when you get a survey sure, and to sure. verify. But um, what I, cause our title insurance covers for those type of things. Okay, so so you guys do title insurance. Are you protecting the seller or the buyer? We're protecting the buyer for future problems. If how about, like, the, how about the seller too? Do you protect the seller or or once well, the seller sells, they're they're good. Like they, like the, the the buyer can only go again like go after you guys for any issues on title, not the seller, right? If it wasn't disclosed to us and nobody knows, it's been that way for a hundred years, and the buyer wants to put in a claim. And that's when you come to us as title insurance. Okay. So that's why your guys did a survey and it opened up a can of worms. The can of worms may have been there for a hundred years, but how do you resolve that now? Are they moving fence lines? Are they going to go to the neighbors and start creating easements and doing all that? That would probably be the easiest way to do it. Okay. But you know, those, those are easy. I mean, it could be an easy fix, but. <clears throat> yeah, I know. I mean, I, I'm always skeptical about, you know, recommending getting a survey. Cause like you said, I mean, depending on where you're at, you know, there's obviously there's, 
there's, you know, there's, you know, flat land track communities where it's like, it's pointless to get a survey unless you're going to be building a, like a, like a brand new construction or buildings, you know, you know, extending your house or, or whatnot. Um, but I feel like it does open up a can of worms and, and, and there, it, there's, there's some issues that you may not be able to resolve. Like if, if the neighbor, you know, you know, put some structure that's small in your backyard that you don't even care about and you, and you find out that's, that that's, it's, it's on your land. Like, what does it really matter, right? As the buyer, it's like, you know, like we know what we like, right? We, we, we put an offer at the house. We liked it. Now you get a survey and you're like, well, this guy's on my lot. So like, like in, in your experience, in your 30 plus years of experience, what do buyers usually do if they find out that there's these kind of issues after they get a survey? Do they cancel the deal? Uh, are they talking to title and seeing what, you know, what can be done? Are they talking to the, to the other homeowner and saying, hey, like, we got to get this resolved. Like, like what, what, what's the course of action there? Well, like right now I have a deal and it, it's up in the hills in a, a beach community. And it's been, this thing's been this way for 40 years. Yeah. And so it's a house that has a driveway that goes up and the garage is in the back and there's a sl slight slope up and a little fence that goes along the property. Well, the neighbor, put their pool equipment at, against the fence and it's actually on our property okay because the person went and got a survey for what reason i don't know it's just you know it's been that way forever the pool equipment's been there forever so they did go to the neighbor and the neighbor is not happy and does says they're not going to move anything and people think that there's thing called prescriptive easement but you'd have to actually go to court and fight it which is um which no one would ever win that. No one would ever win that. You, you pay taxes on your property and it's yours. So that's the bottom. That's what I tell my aides when you're, when things like that happen, you know? So, you know, we're trying to resolve it. There's things that we're trying to get around to make it happen, but. Sure. We'll so, see what so, we so for this instance here uh, on your deal here, uh, I'm assuming it's in Malibu. Um, but, but it's the, 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 their pool equipment, like the pump and all that stuff, is on the other person's property, right? So, so if something happens, right, like that thing catches on fire or whatever, like, like, like we're talking about like liability here, right? If a pipe breaks and yeah. floods down the hill, you know, or something like that, yeah, absolutely. If it was me, I would say, you know, um, you know, please move your pool equipment. But it's been that way for so long; it's kind of a drag, you know. If you've lived in a house that long and you've, you've never moved it, you know, it's been that way, they have just replaced it or whatever, they didn't yeah. change anything. But you gotta understand things are so much different these days, you know. Um, so I, I, I mean, if it was me, like I bought a house out where I live and they call them um, patio homes. Yeah. Where the neighbor's house, his boundary lines, and this is 40 years, this is seven, built in the 70s. Yeah. They thought the paint of my house was the boundary line. Okay. So I come to buy the house and I'm checking it out and there's a little marker on the curb. And so I call my inspector out here and we have an inspector that will help walk the boundary lines to, you know, if you just want to get a rough idea, sure. it ends up that neighbor was using five feet of my property for 40 years. Wow. Five feet. By five, five, five a whole feet side by yard. A whole side so yard. yard. So five feet by what, like, like 80? 80. 80. 80. Wow. Yes. That's a lot of space. So maybe even more because it goes into the front. So maybe yeah. seven, whatever it is. Yeah. So during the course of my transaction, since I'm in title, I throw a cloud on title so no one else could actually buy the property, which, you know, sometimes you have to do to make negotiation, make it work. What does that mean? Throw a cloud on title. Um, they actually had a fence that was attached to the house. Okay. So we showed the effect of an encroachment that they actually had a fence that went from their garage to my garage. Gotcha, gotcha. And so in negotiation, nobody wanted to do anything. It's been this way. The whole neighborhood is this way. Yeah. So here I go to the, buy the property and, and no one wants to give up five feet when it's been that way forever. And it was a rental property next door. Yeah. And, so finally, I had to get involved again, and I asked the guy. I called the homeowner next door. He he didn't live there. He rented it out. Yeah. I said, "What what do you want that we can fix it and make it go away?" 
He says, well, I want a vinyl fence all the way down. It's 80 feet of vinyl fencing that I put up. A lot of money. At, by the close of escrow. He wanted it done by the time of closed escrow. So I had to get everything done and ready. So when we close, it would be up. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know it was like six or seven grand to do that. So that was, <laughs> you know, a big hit yeah. on my big mouth. Where, And then it comes to that all the neighbors now are moving their fences, are putting fences up for that five feet. You so I caused a little havoc in the neighborhood. <laughs> but everybody's I'm not, I'm enjoying their land. What's that? I said, I'm not surprised you caused havoc in your neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> Good thing right, you're so, so that's so you know the so when you're buying a property again these, these are important questions to ask your agent right to ask your agent hey you know if you see anything that's kind of strange right like like uh like sometimes i'll see like somebody's garage overhang going way into some other uh, you know other person's property so you know you, you want to investigate that and, and you know see you know what the you know repercussions are and see what kind of effect it's going to have on value if you go to sell the house in four or five years, because it, it might not affect you as the, as the buyer, because you don't care, but the next buyer, you know, they may care. And then you have to, you know, maybe give a credit or some, or some issue, you know, arises later on when you, when you go to sell it. So you always kind of have to think about, Hey, how is this going to affect my resale value going forward? You, you absolutely want to want to do all the due diligence as possible. Like, yeah. like I said, if we're in a deal and you need our inspector to go walk about and see if that, that Eve is hanging over, you know, we do it. it. It's, you know, there's a minimal charge to have our guy come out during our transactions. Yeah. And, um, and do you so, guys note that stuff? Like, like, like if my client did a survey and there's a, a bunch of encroachments, uh, do you guys have to put that on the prelim now moving forward? If you give us the survey to ensure, we'll show, every, we'll actually ensure everything on the survey only. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. So, so, so it's if you're a buyer and you're getting a survey, do not send it to your title because that may affect, like, the value of your house moving forward. It, well, you got it. You you don't have to give it to us, but if you know between two parties you, and you, the neighbors, if you want to fix what the problem is, we won't show that. Sure. But it's it's always good to to let us know there's an encroachment if you know about it because you if they want to come in and close and then put a claim to us we're going to find out that you knew about it. So sure. you, know, you can't just close and do stuff like that. Yeah. Sure. Sure. So let's, let's talk about the fees, who's paying for title insurance um, and, and you know, how much it costs to, to get title insurance. Well, title insurance is probably one of the least expensive fees as far as a transaction goes. Um, it's the seller and historically is the way it's handled is, is how I spin it is uh, the seller pays for the buyer's policy and the buyer pays for the lender's policy. Yeah, sure. And, and, and title insurance is governed by the Department of Insurance. It used to be back in the day where, you know, we could shave off a fee here and shave off a fee here, but there's a new rule that came into play, um, SB 133, that governs the title insurance. And I have a certificate of, to sell title insurance for California title. So our fees are based on a rate book and we're all subject to that rate book. And California Title, we're, we're blessed to have five underwriters. So we're kind of like a broker for title insurance companies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you have a client and a buyer or a seller, they go, oh, I, I want First American Title. Well, we can write on First American paper. Gotcha. So, gotcha. you know, we have five different title companies. Did I answer that properly? Yeah, no, no, you did. And, and, and you know, a lot of people don't understand that. You're like, all right, on the, on the, on the purchase contract, you, we always check the box, the seller, to pay for the owner's title insurance. Right. But a lot of a lot of the buyers who are getting loans, and obviously if you're all cash, it, it, it doesn't affect you, but if you're getting a loan, then you have to get a separate policy for your lender. As right. Well. You're, that, that's a buyer fee. It's a buyer that, fee. And, so, and, I, and I'll tell you the reason why you have that lender's policy, um, because God forbid you go into foreclosure, the lender becomes in first position of the first deed of trust. Yeah. So that's why you buy that policy. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, we, we got some family here. We got my 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 brother Danny. He owns a print shop. We have my cousin Paola. We have my other cousin uh, Camilo, who actually just got into real estate, and I actually uh, set him up with uh, one of my friends from college uh, out in Claremont doing real estate. So he's uh, the new member of the family that 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 got in real estate. So that's that's that's. Cool. Don't do it. Don't take the car. No. <laughs> uh, 
actually no i love real estate man real estate's awesome it's a great it's a great business i mean you've raised your family you know and had a you know had a pretty good life doing it so yeah for you young kids um opportunity is what you want to make of it you got to do the work and i yep. know the as hard as you work and you know you do coaching you do all that stuff yeah. which i've tried to hire coaches for me but i'm so motivated myself yeah a lot of the coaches go to me well what do you think i need to help you with? <laughs> so but no, it's true it's true i mean i i you know i have to give it to you you're you're, you're out there you know door knocking and you know going to open houses and providing value for the for the agents who are your clients basically because right. we're, we're giving you business and then for me it's a, it's the same exact thing i mean we're in sales right so we're we have to provide value and and the income that we make is directly correlated to the value that we provide to our clients, right? So if we provide more value to more people, we're, we're gonna get paid more, right? By the, by the transactions that, that we do. Yep. Yeah. The bigger, the bigger, the better. The, yes, the transactions, exactly. you know? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> well, that's why I moved to LA, bro. So I can, uh, I can sell the multi-million dollar properties and make the bigger commission. And you did, didn't we just close one in the flats in Beverly Hills with you? Yes, for 6.7, we double ended that one. That was nice, that was a nice commission. And uh, now I got a 5.1 uh, closing in uh, Hancock Park, revving the buyer on that one. And uh, we got one in um, in Brentwood. You're the you're you're on title on that one for 1.24. And then uh, I'm trying to get another one in escrow in downtown for just under a million. So we got a lot of stuff going, man. A lot of stuff cooking. I, I can I ask you a question? How how do you get your leads what do you do i mean what i i see you're out there grinding all the time and and i during covid you're the only one that i've actually met at a property with a client and that kind of service that you bring to the table is crazy i mean to to get me out here where i haven't really left my house you know and i know and i was I, I was surprised that 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 was like your first time outside man i was trying to give you a hug and you're like don't touch me <laughs> <laughs> That was funny. Got to keep it safe, man. Yeah, no, you know? I mean, you know, you know, if, you know, if you guys are watching, you know, and you don't know my story, you know, I was on a team, you know, it was just me and, and, and this other guy at a, at Hilton Highland. He actually hired me as an assistant 12 years ago. And then that kind of changed into a hybrid role where I was helping him on his, his on his deals and I had my own deals. But I, you know, I really wasn't, was, wasn't prospecting. I, I, I had a small book of business and, you know, that was good enough for me at the time. You know, I wasn't really focus on my business as I am now. So as of a year and a half ago, I really looked at my at my next, you know, six to 12 months of, of business. I said, wow, I don't have a lot of deals that, that are going to happen. I, I got to start, you know, making a change. And that's when I hired a, a real estate coach over at Tom Ferry. And I really just kind of started, you know, just prospecting every single day. And that's what it takes, right? Right, Mark? I mean, you, you know how it is. I mean, you, you do it every single day. You're out there grinding, you know, visiting real estate offices. I'm sure now, you know, you've been in business for so long that you have a lot of referrals coming in. But as a new agent, because I was on a team for a long time and I was a prospect. And so I consider, I consider myself a new agent, even though I still have a few, you know, uh, you know, referrals coming in, you know, here and there. But for the most part, I, you know, a lot of my business is coming from prospecting. You know, I spent two and a half to three hours a day making calls, you know, from 8.30 in the morning to 11.30, every single day, Monday through Friday. And then if I'm not doing anything on Saturday, guess what I'm doing? You know, 9.30 to 11.30, two hours on the phone on Making Saturdays. calls, baby. So, uh, you know, I'm just making phone calls to expireds. I'm, I'm, I'm calling, you know. Don't tell your secrets. Don't tell your secrets what you're no, doing. You know, what? I'm, you know I, I, I always love to help people because there's so much, there's so much business out there, right? So like if I, if I give somebody here in my area, you know, my, my, my tricks, like, it's like, there's already other 20 or 30, 40, 50 agents that are doing the same thing. Right. So it's just about doing it well. And it's all about timing. Right. Because I may call somebody and, and they may be, um, I got my other cousin, Amanda. Hey Amanda. Um, I may be, you know, calling a homeowner that may be looking to sell and, and they say, you know what, we're not, we're not interested. And a month later, I see their house on the market with some other agent. That other agent might have just called at the right time or they might have had the right tone or whatever it is, right? So, you know. Or a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend. 
Everybody knows a real estate agent. <laughs> Everybody knows a real estate agent, you know. Right. But but only you know like the the, the the top you know whatever one or two percent of real estate agents do whatever ninety percent of of the business. And I think that's true in any business that that you get into, right? Yeah. Um, but it, honestly, it's just it's just working hard, having a plan, and having somebody who's going to be accountable for you. So for me, it's it's my coach, it's it's myself, it's my girlfriend. Right. And, um, you know, just just grinding every single day, but enjoying it. Like you said, I, mean, I, I really do enjoy it. The prospecting in the morning, I, I will tell you, you know, when I get to a point where I get a bunch of referrals, I may not be prospecting three hours a day uh, because that that's a grind and it's tiring. And, you know, at the at the end of the day, I'm just like, I'm fucking spent. Excuse my language. Um, but but uh, <laughs> but it's good, man. It's good. It's been it's is my my best year so far. You know, I've, it, next week. I'll have closed over $30 million in real estate. So that's awesome. That's beautiful, man. That That's a good number right there. There's not too many agents that are doing that that number. I yeah. mean, yeah. you're getting into that 1%. You know? Well, yeah. I mean, that's my goal. Next year, I, I, I really want to get into that $50 million of, uh, range where I'll be the top 400 agents in the whole nation, which is which is awesome. Are you doing any geographical marketing or yeah. postcards, mailers, door yeah. knockers? Yeah, for sure. Um, thanks, guys. Well, your your printing company could help us, right? Well, yeah, my uh, my brother Danny actually prints for me, uh, but he he focuses on on on, on different kind of printing. Um, but I, I do give him some business. Uh, but yes, so I I do have a, geog a geographical farm in Venice, uh, which is right down the street from where, where I'm living here in Marin del Rey, and it's a great area. It's a it's a high it's a high turnover right now. It's about six to seven percent turnover, which is Usually in an area, it's around four to four and a half, but this area is, is a high turnover rate because people have been living there for you know, 40, Ever. 50, 60 years. I just got my first listing there two weeks ago. You met the homeowners. Thanks, Mark, for coming out. And it's the perfect property. I, this is what I've been looking for, right? Um, um, I've, been, I've been door knocking there for the last you know, nine months. I've been spending a thousand bucks a month, you know, you know, sending mailers out, designing mailers, uh, you know, walking the streets and door knocking and dropping off flyers, a lot of sweat equity. Um, it's a $1.6 million development opportunity. So it's, it's a, it's a land value lot. And, uh, and, you know, so I'm going to, you know, I'm going to sell it to a developer. So I'll rep the developer and the seller. And once that, that developer finishes, you know, building a brand new luxury spec, uh, spec development, then I'm going to be listing that property for sale. It'll be in between three to five, uh, $3.5 million. So that's where it's at. Well, have, have you ever thought of trying to spec it yourself? Yes. I, I'm just getting into this whole development you know, world, which is, I don't know why I didn't think about it before, because it's like, this is where the money's at, you know, at least for a real estate agent, right? It's like, you find you find the the teardown right the the development opportunity. Uh, you get the listing. You sell it off market, so you, you're not doing open houses anything like anything like that. You, you just find the, the the developer, and the developer is is going to be your highest bidder on this property anyway. Right. So you don't even have to put it on the market because any other buyer out there isn't going to spend what a developer is going to spend on it, right? They're going to pay more than than the average buyer because it's worth more as a development opportunity. At the, at the second leg when exactly. they build it out. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of agents in, in LA that, 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 that focus on that. And, uh, you know, I, I, I really didn't, didn't understand why they were getting all these great development listings. And now I know. So, <laughs> so hey, you know, better late than never. But, you know, that's, that's, that's going to be one of my lead pillars, you know, expires, geo farm. Uh, my sphere of influence, and now these uh, these uh, developer uh, deals. Yeah, that's that's right there. If you master those crafts and and yeah. keep those rolling, you're gonna have plenty of resources and properties to sell. That's for sure. Yeah, for sure. And 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 speaking of development, um, you know, like I said, that's what I want to get into, right? So right now, I'm just trying to rep the rep the the, the developers, but I do want to learn the the development process, right? Getting an architect. Finding um, a lender, uh, a you know a money guy to come in and partner with, and you know develop a, a property and and sell it right. So then I you know I, I have more meat in the game, and also you know more risk, but also a lot more re uh, reward as well. So um, you know looking forward to doing that in the next couple of years. That's awesome.
my mom's asking me where my where my wine glass is at and i'll say mom i'm having some water i have to pack to go to arkansas because my 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 buddy's gonna get married in arkansas um so just have some water i'm gonna have some dinner right now i gotta pack so i got a long a long night i have a red eye at at, at midnight and i have a layover in dallas for five hours so it's gonna be a long 24 hours for me that is yeah no airports for me i'd be driving to arkansas oh man oh hell no arkansas is like probably like can't you take a, a charter jet can't you go to get one of those i'm not there yet i'm not there yet mark i need a charter jet for although my flight costs like 700 dollars but don't they have those small group ones that you, aren't they, they do yeah yeah they do but i don't think they fly to arkansas man you know <laughs> <laughs> No one's going to Arkansas today. Huh? Cool, cool, cool fact though. This I'm going to Benton, Bentonville. I think it's what it's called, Arkansas, and that's the home of of Walmart. Cool, cool story. You know, cool. Uh, you know, art of. You know, that's a fun home. fact. That's yeah, a fun fact. fact. And look at Walmart now. They're everywhere. They're huge, man. They're huge. Yeah, yeah. Mark, thanks for joining, man. Um, any last words or advice for anybody looking to buy a house regarding uh, title? Uh, definitely use Paul for your real estate needs. Um, Thank you. As far as title goes, you know, that's why you hire the professionals to yeah. do what you need to get done. You yeah. hire a good agent. He has a good team behind him, a good title company, maybe a good lender, good escrow company. So they handle the problems. So what yeah. Paul does is, is helps, you know, helps resolve them as well. But, but that, that, you know, as far as anything else, no, that's, that's, that's it. I think we had it. We had another couple questions on there. We did discuss time. Yeah, later. yeah. We had a couple questions, but um, you know, I mean, like we, we we talked about liens, we talked about easements, we talked about surveys, we talked about you know, you know, what your fees are, who pays for them. So I think we've uh, we've covered everything. And plus, I have to get going. I gotta get packing. I gotta get. Uh, hey, Paul. Have a great, my... safe tri trip. Thanks, Thanks for having me on, bro. I appreciate it. All right, man. Have a All great right, trip. Say hello, your mom. Man. See ya. All right. Bye, Bye guys. See you later. All right, guys. Hope you like that. We'll see you next Thursday here. Same time. See you later.